a new day. The brake calibers are all painted this nice glossy black. It's not too glossy because I don't have a clear coat on it, but I mean this is perfect. You're really not going to see these anyway. Um, I just want it to look nice once you take the wheel off and you're inside. You know, like clean workspace basically. So I bought, um, I'll show you when I get to it, but I bought the center punch and then a special drill bit. So I should be able to get the rivet off today. So right now my goal is to put the new calipers and rotors onto the fronts. Once that's done, oh and the soft line. Once that's done, then I want to attempt drilling out the rear rivet. Um, the front hard lines, both nuts on both sides were stripped out. Uh, the, the passenger side, I actually stripped out because it was seized and just, it didn't move. But this side was already stripped out. So I think I'm just going to get all new hard line instead of trying to rig something up with some fittings and extend the line a little bit. Um, I looked it up and all new hard line, like for the whole car, can be had for under $200. So um, really not too bad. So as you can see, the brakes are on, uh, we got the rotor, the caliber pads, and then I even got the soft line in. Um, so both of these were just stripped. Um, this one was stripped so I couldn't even get a bite on it so I just tore the hose off to get the caliper off. So I'll, I'll be getting that off eventually, um, I'll, f I'll figure out a way, I think I can twist down here and just rip it. Um, so yeah, I'll probably do that. But so yeah, as you can see, these are just the uh, AC Delco stock replacement brakes basically. Um, not a performance upgrade or anything like that. This is not going to be a car that I'm driving really hard. Um, I just need brakes that work. Um, so it, it really doesn't make sense for me to spend the extra money for something that I'm really not going to get back in return. Plus, you'll never see these, so like if I had drilled and slotted rotors, You'd never be able to tell because of the way the wheel shaped. If you could tell, then I, I would have uh, got those. Alright, so the bleeders on the front calipers are on the top here. And shouldn't be too bad. Alright, uh, I guess it's time to start drilling the rivets out. As you can see by the metal shavings, I've begun drilling out uh, the rivets on the rotors. Um, I've spent quite a bit of time on this. Drilling bolts and rivets out is not my favorite thing to do. I don't know if it's anyone's favorite thing to do. Um, luckily, over the years, over the couple years that I've been doing this, I've managed to get good quality uh, Milwaukee drill bits. So uh, I got the good bits now, and it drills a little bit faster. This is my, this was an Amazon drill. Um, it's actually doing pretty well for me. So I finally made some progress. First up, I went to Harbor Freight. I picked up this transfer punch or the center punch set. Um, that way I can punch a center punch in and sorry it's raining right now so it's kind of loud. <laughs> but so I center punch it and then I started off with a quarter inch bit um, just to start it straight and make sure I'm straight and centered on the bolt. And then I stepped up to, uh, here is the bit right here. This is an 11, no, 2164 drill bit. Um, I went and bought this because I saw a video saying to use this. Um, this worked, but I, I didn't really know what I was doing. I drilled much farther than I had to. You really only have to dr drill about a quarter inch, and then you can step up to a bigger drill bit and whack the head out, or if you have a nice chisel you can punch the head off um, but so what what's working for me is this drill bit it's a 3 8 so I drilled about half an inch deep 
uh, really try to do about a quarter inch and that's it. But I got a half inch deep. Um, this is a three, three eighths, so it's much bigger than the hole. And once it grabs on, it just rips the head off, so. So I'm gonna leave you guys in normal speed instead of a time lapse. Let's try this. So I've been using plenty of uh, PB Blaster. Normally I use like WD-40 or just engine oil, but PB Blaster is what I got. And that just popped off super easy. Hard part's getting the rivets off the drill bit. Oh, that hit my hand. In my leg. Alright. It's very satisfying when drilling something off actually works. Alright, so I got two left. I'm going to take them out and then I'll show you when I'm removing the rotor. Alright, so still working on getting this rotor off. We got the heads drilled out, but uh, you, you can use a punch and just hammer the rivet out. Um, I don't have a punch. Stuff I've improvised with, with like um, just a smaller socket that fits in there. Trying to hit it with a hammer, it's not working. Uh, the only hammer I have is this small little Harbor Freight one. Uh, I guess I left my big hammer behind in California. So, I'm um, trying to make do with what I got right now. And I read online and I found this tip and it seems to be working. And I'm kind of confident that it's actually going to work. So I want to show you the process. So, here's a rear caliper bolt. And here's the front caliper bolt. So the front bolts are longer. They're the same thread and size and all that, just this one's longer. So. Take your front caliper bolt, put it into the caliper mounting spot for the rear, and uh, the, I saw this on a forum, someone mentioned it, and they said to use like a metal paint scraper in between the bolt end that's sticking out and the rotor, and just to give it a little more surface area. Um, I'm using a spark plug socket right now because that's I don't have a deep 5.8. <laughs> um, this is my deep 5.8. But yeah, so the idea is when you're tightening it, it's pushing against the rotor and it's going to press it out. It's like using a press, but this is the cheap version of a press. Um, I don't think it's going to push all the way out since all I have is a bolt here, so it's not actually going to reach far enough to get the rotor all the way off of the hub. Um, so I'll, but I should be able to just hammer it off by then. So let's get this off. We're finally touching the rotor now. If, if my uh, electric ratchet was charged, this would be so much easier. quite a bit of progress.
Fine. It's off. <laughs> oh, I shook you guys. Here it is, the back side of it. Actually didn't drill into the rotor at all. Uh, so, I'm impressed. I, I drilled somewhat straight. <laughs> the straightest I've ever drilled before. Oh wow. So, you know, it was probably stuck on this pad. This pad is sticking out way farther than it should. I wouldn't be surprised if the tension down here, like the, the spring or uh, the star wheel isn't connected. Because that's that's what I was stuck on, um, more than likely. So when you're in this scenario, basically, if the rotor is not coming off, but the rivet heads are drilled out, either it's the corrosion from the hub to the rotor that's holding it on still, it's the the threads of the rotor or the threads of the rivet still attached to the rotor. You just need to drill a little farther. Or in my case, the, what I'm guessing is the parking brake was holding it in this whole time. You can see the caliper bolt there. Alright, so finally, um, I already d did the parking brake on the other side um, since I can't really show you guys because it's in the corner. So I'll be showing you how to do the parking brake in the next one. Um, it's really not that bad as long as you know what you're doing. <laughs> so, alright. Also with the the leftover rivet bits, you can grind them down with a, a like a, a wire cutter, flap disc, something like that. Um, or you can just leave them. I mean, no one's ever going to see them, and they're never going to cause an issue. So, uh, your call. More than likely, I'm probably just going to leave them. Um, I mean, I want to check to make sure the, the hub is true, and it's not bent or out of whack or anything like that so uh, right now it's in gear so I'll have to put a neutral to spin it and make sure it doesn't wobble or anything and if the hub is fine then I'm just gonna leave it all right we're gonna end the video here um, I went ahead and took off the brake lines in the rear so the, the hard line that goes to the caliper then to the flex line then that the brake line that goes from like the trailing arm that way I, I left I left that hard line because the fitting didn't break, so we're all good there. And then I just looked up front. I'm trying to get an idea of what brake lines I actually need. So if I don't need the whole kit, then I'm not gonna spend that extra money since doing this stuff is gonna be a whole lot more work and I'm really not gonna experience anything different unless they are rusted out, which they're not. So I looked and I just need two brake lines. The the one that goes from uh, the, the proportioning valve to the left front left tire or front left caliber and then the one that goes from the por portioning valve to the front right so just those two those are the only two that broke um, so that's pretty good um, but yeah so thank you for watching and the next one we'll be doing parking brakes um, you really can't see because it's dark but parking brakes and then got to do the master cylinder and the brake booster so stay tuned